Because both of them stuck you up there. Okay, it works. So if you hear any like weird thumping in the background, it's my dishwasher. It's literally the loudest thing on earth. Welcome back. So I dropped my beauty blender on the ground and it got like hair on it and I like touched up my nose and so if I'm itching my face a lot, it's because I have like hair on my face, I think. I'm so itchy. I'm going to be talking about my top three in every category for a full face. And I'm gonna also going to do a full face of makeup in the B-roll. Really how I chose a top three in every category was if I lost it, would I rebuy it immediately? Like, would I have the need or I wouldn't even say need. Nobody needs makeup. Would I go out and repurchase it because I would feel lost and empty without this beautiful thing in my life? And two, how much do I actually reach for these products day to day? And the answer is a lot. Like I use these products a lot. Like usually when I'm wearing a full face of makeup just out and about and not making any sort of online makeup content, I'm usually wearing these. So I could probably minim like take down my collection even further. I'm not going to. Let's start with complexion. The first one I want to talk about is the NARS Tinted Moisturizer. I've been repurchasing this for, I don't know how many years, at least for four or five years at this point. Nothing has topped this that I've tried ever since. I, I bought this on a whim years ago, actually. I was just like, oh, I like NARS products, blah, blah, like, I used to never wear any type of foundation. I would just use the Radiant Creamy Concealer. And then I saw that they had a tinted moisturizer and that's when I had first started using the Glossier Skin Tint. And I was like, well, maybe this will be even better because it's NARS and I love NARS. And I was right. This is how you know you love something is when you can't imagine something not matching you. And so I have two other shades. So I have three of these. I have light one light one and a half and light two. Like that's how much I love this product. I'm like, oh, I love the smell. It's so bright. Like it smells like, um, like a lemon or like a, like fruity pebbles almost. It's just so lovely. This gives you a nice dew. It mixes with other products well. It sits on other top, it sits on top of products really well. Um, yeah, I just, I love this. Okay, uh, this is my other favorite product. Uh, and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I love it. Um, it's pretty pricey, like all, like, Charlotte Tilbury things. This is like a three-in-one product. So you can put this all over your face as, like, just a sheer base, sh like a sheer glowy base. You can use this as a glowy primer because foundations or, and whatnot sit very beautifully on top of it, or you can use it as a highlighter. Um, I always like to have a mini for my summer shade because I do get tan pretty fast, and I also have, and this big one is my most of the year round shade, which is shade two. I actually think 2.5 would be my perfect all year round shade. Um, but when I bought this 2.5 didn't exist yet. So this is the product that never dies. I've had this for so long. It's probably expired, but I refuse to throw it out. Like I want to use all of this before I get another one. And then I have a mini in the shade three, I believe. And that is my summertime shade. Um, I use this all three ways. Like I said, uh, it's my favorite to mix with my NARS, and it gives me just such a radiant complexion. I like to use this all by itself with just a little bit of concealer. Um, and I, I use it as a highlighter, too. Like, I think that this blends out beautifully over top of bare skin, foundation, tinted moisturizers, just an SPF, what have you. This is, um, if I lost this, it, I would be on some type of website, like paying the like 40 something dollars that this is. For my concealer, I also only have two products. Um, the first one is, I, I like to have like a dewy and kind of like a more um, natural or matte option. So um, my dewy option is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have this in shade 3.20. So this is the olive shade. This, uh, this is super hydrating. It's, amazing coverage. 
it makes me look more awake. I do have pretty like deep set, like right in here is pretty uh, deep set. So sometimes even when I'm not tired, I look pretty tired because it, it does get kind of like a greenish purple in there. And this covers it up because it is almost like a perfect complex, it's like a perfect match for my complexion. But also brightening and hydrating at the same time. I love the way this looks over top of the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I just look really awake and glowy and healthy. Uh, downside to this, I didn't like this at first because of the smell to it. Um, it's it's like some type of floral, but it, it disappears when you put it on your face. It's not something that lingers around that you smell throughout the day or anything like that, which I was kind of worried. I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't do well with flower scents. Um, but I guess it is nice because I guess you can smell when it goes off because since this is clean beauty, whatever that's supposed to mean, um, People do say that this expires rather quickly, which is a downside to it, but um, I have yet to uh, have mine really smell rancid. So uh, yeah, I'm actually about, about right there. I shook it up a little bit, but I'm about right there. Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I love this. I, current, I have this in a few shades. I have a few shades in the Revealer Concealer as well, depending on like the look I want to do, but I'm going to show you like things that completely like just match my skin tone currently um, because I don't really like a brightening concealer. I do like concealer where I can cover up any sort of blemish or put all over the face without it mismatch being like a mismatch for my complexion at the time. Um, this is in the shade Custard. I think that this is such an amazing concealer. This has like this magical ability to transform to the texture of the base that you have underneath it. So pigmented. Um, it's my favorite thing to spot conceal or if I'm really really tired and my eyes are kind of drooping a little bit I do put this in a very thin layer around my eyes. I like this around my nose. Um, I love this. I love this so much. If I lost this, I would repurchase it in a heartbeat. I think that this is one of the best concealers I've ever tried. And I'm not a like matte makeup type of person. And this is, um, when it describes it as soft matte, I think that that's just the perfect way to describe it because it, it's blurring. It blends out amazingly for how pigmented it is. You can use this with a sponge, you can use this with a brush, you can use it with your fingers. It's so versatile. I just, I I recommend this over the famous NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer any day. This doesn't cling to dry patches. If applied in thin layers, this is something that you could over apply. Don't get me wrong because it is so matte and it is so pigmented. But if you just dab, dab, spread it out, just don't overdo it and you'll love it. It's, it's one of a kind. I recently decluttered a lot of stuff. So the survivors of this declutter, uh, bronzer wise, I used to have a lot more of like powder bronzers, a few more um, liquid and cream bronzers. Uh, but I think I've kind of hit a point where I, I don't need more than just a few options when it comes to bronzers. Um, the first one is my current favorite, and it is the Say Sun Melt. It is such a lovely color. I think I have, what is mine? Medium bronze. I have mine in medium. Um, I like to apply this with a brush, and I like to apply it with a sponge. It just really depends on the day or whatever is in my hand. Uh, this is such, it's, I wouldn't say it's too dewy, but it shears out beautifully. Um, you can build it up easily. You can, yeah, it, you can wear this subtly or you can wear this um, in thin layers to have more pigment and to give your face a more contoured, sun-kissed look. I personally like to wear this in like a semi, I would say two layers via sponge. Yeah, yeah, I would say that that's, anyway, I really, really love this product. 
I think that it is well worth the money. If I lost it, I would go out and repurchase it. There have been a few other products like this that have come out um, that I have been tempted to get, but then when I think about it, I'm like, I'm fine with just owning this. Like, I don't need the, I, I, I don't need the Nars Laguna. I don't need the Charlotte Tilbury new matte bronzer that she came out in this very beautiful, large, compact. What else? There's the rose ink one. Um, there's so many that are, uh, there's the Chanel, oh, the Chanel one, which everybody says that this is kind of a dupe for, I believe. But this is, this is fine. You get so much product. Um, I have no need for any, any other bronzer with this type of formula. Um, this is serving all of it all this is serving its purpose and i really really enjoy it and i think it's super lovely nude sticks bondi bay i'll swatch this on my hand here since i'm not wearing it in any b-roll but it's an it's kind of yellow and i really like this when i'm at my fairest and it blends out very very easily see that it's super lovely and you can really build this up or you can have wear it slightly sheer um like the blushes it is that same kind of like tuggy formula without being too dry and blends out very easily um these come with these little brushes on the end but I, don't, I don't use them I'm not really big fan of those but i think this is this is something that if i lost it i wouldn't rush as fast as to buy the say again if i lost it but i do pick this up a lot and i do enjoy using it um and i would warrant it in the top three of the bronzers that i own the last one here is the westman atelier contour stick in the shade biscuit this beautiful luxe packaging it's so heavy and this is it's I wouldn't really deem this one a bronzer. This is definitely a contour. Um, but I, I even find that even though it is pretty cool toned, I do like to apply it like a bronzer as well. It, it kind of goes both ways for me in this packaging weight. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really lovely. It's very emollient. It blends literally in three seconds. It's so easy to use. Pricey. Very, very pricey. Um, if I misplaced it, like the, um, like the nude sticks one, I probably wouldn't rush out, but I would definitely, uh, I, I would eventually repurchase it for sure. I think it's a very beautiful kind of like contour bronzer shade. Um, for my skin tone, there are other shades available as well, but this, um, I think it's it's a very very lovely product it's also clean beauty so there's no scent either which i really there's no scent with any of these those are my bronzers <laughs> uh i love this i only have one for brows i don't really do anything to my brows besides kind of like stick them up with a clear product <laughs> i don't I, I just can't be bothered. I'm going to be completely honest. I, I went from doing the pomade, like dip brow to a pencil. And then I was like, oh, the pencil's too annoying. And then I went to a powder and then like, that was just a whole other step. And then one day I got a sample of a clear brow gel by the 24 hour brow gel um, setter. They just like the laminate brow 24 hour setter. I'm not sure on the name, but I loved it. I loved how my brows looked just completely slicked up because they are really thick and um, they hold their shape on their own. I don't really have to pluck all that much. They're really long and they're thick. <clears throat> okay, let, let's, let's be mature here. You're almost 30. Um, I've tried so many clear brow gels. I've tried luxury, I've tried high-end, and I've tried drugstore. I believe when I bought this, this was $8. I'm pretty sure it was like $8 or something like that. And I think that this works so much better than high-end and luxury brow products that I've used. I don't hear people talking about this all that much, but I don't know why. Like if you let, and it, to each their own with brow, I, I feel like brow products and like lip balms are <laughs> very personal 
things in the cosmetic world. Um, you either like something or you don't. You know, and for my personal type of brows, I really like to slick them back and just not worry about them. I don't have to worry about any type of color, any type of smudging, anything like that because it's clear and it's just literally glued to my face. Blush was really hard. And if you just watched my previous video, um, uh, you know I love it. So I'm just going to start with an obvious one. Um, this is Nude Sticks. It's Sunkiss. It's their matte formula. It's this really lovely sun-kissed um, bronzy color. This like flushed bronzy color. I think it's so so lovely. Um, this I think this is one of my I think this is my my favorite blush ever because I wear this all the time. I'm wearing it today. Sponge, fingers, brush, it doesn't matter. I love it so much. The next one is I mean all of all three of these were in my blush video, but um yeah, rose ink. The rose ink blush. I think this is uh <sighs> so yummy. It's so that's the only way I can really describe it is just yummy. Um I have the shade Fox Glove. And let me blend it out on my hand here for you. Um, this one is a lot more pink. This is a little more pink than I usually go for. Like I, I tend to go for like a neutral brownie pink. But this one, it's blended out. Oh my god, it's just so pretty. I just want all of them. And I just, I have to have, practice a little self-control and use what I have before I splurge on more rose ink blushes. But these, oh my god. That's just so lovely. It, what do you even say? I just love it. It sticks. It doesn't transfer. It adheres to the skin. It. You just look good. A powder. I figured. I figured since I have so many cream blushes, I I should talk about a powder. Um, this one is the Hourglass um, Strobe Blush. Stro ambient. These fucking names, man. Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush in Brilliant Nude. The reasons I love this blush, if you haven't seen my previous video, is that it's basically a three-in-one. It's your bronzer, your highlighter, and your blush all in one because it is a very neutral kind of brown leaning shimmery blush. So it just has the most amazing glow to it. Um, I'm not even going to swatch it because it, the swatch doesn't, it doesn't even really like show up that well. But when you apply it onto your face with a, a brush, you get this like beautiful like I don't want to say tanned look to your cheeks but you look like you um have been in the sun and you are just a goddess like it, this makes me feel like very ethereal it's very very lovely very pricey but um hourglass is just like the master of very finely milled elegant powders and if I lost this I would be spending like $56 to buy this again. I think this is like, oh, I think it's like $56. I don't know. But this, this is, it's just so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. I can't imagine uh, not having this. When I got the, the first time I used this, I was like, oh, how did it take me this long to use anything from Hourglass? So for highlighters, I got one of each category. Um, I have a balm, I have a liquid that dries down, and I also have a powder because these are my favorite in each of those categories currently. I do, I used to have a lot more highlighters than I do now, but I've kind of dwindled my collection down for a little bit, like, less overwhelming options. because <laughs> You know when you have too much of something and then none of it just is appealing anymore? Um, but I definitely dwindled it down to, or edited it. I definitely edited it, edited, edited? I have edited it down to just a handful, which I, I feel like I'm going to be making a video about all of my, um, my current collection of highlighters and why I have them. Anyways, I... I'm gonna start with this Westman Atelier in Nectar. This is such a beautiful product. Oh my god, it's this is gives you the most effortless glass skin. Wow, wow, wow. 
I hope this is like picking up how beautiful this does stay a little tacky on the skin but it it has ingredients in it I believe that just soothe the skin and make it very supple and moisturized it has just that like look at that like beautiful shine um like the bronzer it's very emollient it's very moisturizing it blends out in literally like two seconds it has that amazing luxury packaging that is magnetized um it just gives you such a beautiful beautiful glow um not much else you can say about it other than it's beautiful and if you like a bomb highlight that doesn't dry all the way down and it does give you that glass skin type of look then that's for you if you're willing to spend the money on it it is very pricey the next one is what i'm wearing on my face today and it is the um charlotte tilbury hollywood beauty light wand in spotlight this is really beautiful my favorite way to apply this is to put it on the back of my hand and then really saturate my sponge with the product and put it onto my face before I apply my blush. Something I noticed with um, a little bit more metallic highlighter, and most highlighters in general, I don't really do this with bombs, but with powder and more liquidy highlights that dry down a little bit, um, even if they don't, I like to apply them first and then put my blush, either powder or cream on top of it so that it blends together so you don't have a stripe of either like shimmer or gloss or whatever your preference is for highlighting. Anyways, this, um, you can really get this to strobe. Like this is a really, really intense, or you can make it look glass-like and natural, which is what I prefer to do. It comes in a variety of colors. I do believe that the Pillow Talk shade is the most popular thing right now due to a lot of um, Vogue celebrity get ready with me's, but Spotlight is my favorite because it's pretty universal. It's a beautiful champagne and it doesn't have any sort of like chunky glitter. Um, it doesn't dry out my face the way um, liquid highlighters that kind of dry down in the past did. I remember specifically the color effects one that I used when it, when that first came out like probably like six years ago or something when that was like a trending thing that like metallic like it made my skin so textured and so dry and I hated it and just she really kills it with highlight like Charlotte Tilbury understands highlighter and the last one is my favorite powder highlighter and this is the Laura Mercier it, it's so the the name doesn't make any sense it is the Matte Radiance Baked Powder, and this is in the shade 1. I think it's the only shade now, but I could be totally wrong. This is this big-ass dome. Look at it. But it, it is, oh my god, it is such a soft powder, and it's not shimmery. It's, it's something. Hang on, let me get this swatch going for you, and I'll blend it out. Oh my god, it's so wet looking and ethereal and so light. I think this is so beautiful. And it nobody talks about it. Like I don't know why nobody talks about it. I I I've heard one person talk about this on the YouTube beauty community and this is just so so beautiful. I think it's my favorite powder highlighter I've ever ever used. Um and that's saying a lot because I was pretty grief stricken over um, Becca Opal there for a second. But um, anyways, this is just, it's a little light for me right now. But in a few months, like this is something I'm going to be going for like every day again when I'm doing like a quick like running out the door. This highlighter is, it's divine. I currently only own this powder. Isn't that crazy? I used to have so many powders and stuff, uh, but this is, this is it. I don't know that, this is the only thing I've been reaching for for so long, and I think this is the second one that, yeah, this is the second one that I bought. This The Ilia Translucent Powder, it's the Fade Into You is what it's called. Um, soft Focus Finishing Powder. It's a loose powder, um, and it just, I love it. And it has this little sifty thing. I never close it because I don't ever put it in like a bag or anything like that. Um, but you can close it so that it doesn't like out when you open it, which is kind of what just happened. But um, 
I think it's so so beautiful. It doesn't make my makeup cakey. It doesn't it dull shine, but it doesn't erase it. Um, and I also like here's a trick too. If you one of if one of the reasons you don't like to do the laminate brow thing because you don't like your eyebrow shiny, I put the tiniest, teeny teeny tiniest bit on a brush. And I just dab it over my eyebrows and it kind of sets them in a way like the sticking there's a little bit of stickiness there but it's not like it you like it is if you don't do this um and it just kind of cuts back that shine but you see I've I've powdered all like all of this in here is set um and it just it doesn't kill your glow um and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So like the blush, I had a really, really hard time with the eyes. So I only chose two because I could not pick between two of them to make three. So I just kept my first two obvious choices. Um, so, and this goes without saying that like I could have just inserted the clip of every single <laughs> eyeshadow that I talked about in my first ever video on YouTube but I don't really wear um, anything with palettes like I'm definitely like a one-and-done type of lady at this point and I love cream shadows that make your eyelids look very ethereal and wet um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Charlotte Tilbury's oyster pearl in her eyes to mesmerize formula this is the most beautiful nuance shade. It's this taupey shimmer. Um, and it's one of those shades that you can either build up to have really in like to have really intense eyes, or you can sheer it out and build up in areas so it looks like you're wearing more than one eyeshadow. I love this all over the eyes. It is well, obviously all over the eyes. My god. Space Cowboy by Hermit Decay. It is what I am wearing and I'm showing you in the b-roll that it just makes, it is the wettest looking powder formula. It has a beige base color and, or it, it has a beige-ish base pigment and then it has these really beautiful refined glitters of purple and silver, um, what else is in there? It's just, it, it's it's there's just so many like different colors of glitter in this eyeshadow on top of that base pigment that makes it look so wet. Like it's 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 so wet looking. It's crazy. It it, it wow. Um, but on top of oyster pearl, it just makes the most lovely looking wet eye look. Um, and it's my go-to. It really is my go-to. And I couldn't pick a third shadow because there were so many that were tied for the third contender that I just had to eliminate the third contender completely because there's no way I could pick between some of those shadows because I I love my Tom Ford duos, I love all of my Rowan shadows, I love my Natasha Denona shadows, I'm obsessed with Victoria Beckham lid lusters, like all of them are tied. <laughs> but my top two I would definitely, that I would run out to the store and buy if something happened to either of these, I would buy Space Cowboy and I would buy Oyster Pearl without blinking. Okay, like brow products, mascara is a very personal thing. So this is what works best for my particular eyelash life. So there's two things that deem a mascara worth buying for me. Um, the first thing is that it can't be too wet of a formula and it can't be like a wet formula that I have to wait like a month for it to dry so I can start to enjoy it. Like I want to enjoy it once I open it and it just gets better with time like all mascaras do. But um, yeah, I, my eyelashes are too long so if a formula is too wet then it just, it's a mess. It just gets all over my eyelids. It's, it'll start to, they hit, when I wear my glasses, my eyelashes, when I, and when I wear my glasses, my eyelashes hit my lenses because they're that long. Um, and so if it, if it's too wet and it, it just, I just don't want it. And the second thing, because since my eyelashes are so thick, I don't like 
a formula that's really hard to remove. Like I, I don't like the act of scrubbing my eyelashes. Like it's just, it just kind of grosses me out really. Like I want a product to come off with my cleanser, right? You know, like uh, I have, this is my third one of this. This is the Glossier Lash Lick and this is a tubing mascara. So this is the first tubing mascara I've ever used. And I didn't really understand the concept of a tubing mascara for a long time. And then um, I just I just watched a few videos, uh, people talking about it. And so a tubing mascara, um, basically, instead of being like a thicker kind of formula that just like clumps or like, I don't really know the science behind mascara, but um, a tubing mascara will coat each individual lash in all, and harden like a tube around them once it's dry. And so when you hit the lashes with warm water, it just, they just come off in like little, little tubes and then it's off. Like you don't even need soap. It's kind of insane. Um, this is my third tube of this. This gives you a very, very natural looking lash. Like this isn't something if you're wearing like a lot of makeup or anything, like this is me I put this on when I'm wearing like concealer and like a lip balm and I just need something to make me look a little bit more awake and I put this on and I love it so much. Victoria, oh posh spice, oh my god. Um, the Victoria Beckham, oh man. This is so beautiful. This is also a tubing mascara. So once I got figured out that Holy shit, I love tubing mascaras. I purchased this and wow, it is one of the best mascaras I've ever used. And it, the Glossier one, it leaves your eyelashes kind of hard, but this, this, it, I don't want to say it's conditioning, but it, it makes your eyelashes so, it, your eyelashes feel soft. And unlike other tubing mascaras, you can layer this like three times and your lashes still look amazing like you can get some major volume with this it's an amazing formula um if i lost this i would immediately repurchase it i love it so much um and this is my first tube of this and i i'm very very impressed good job posh spice and my favorite my favorite ever this is not a tubing mascara this is the laura mercier caviar mascara and unlike the other ones this is not a tubing mascara it's a regular mascara but it is not it my eyelashes feel soft like i apply two coats of this and my eyelashes like they're so soft and i don't really know like it it gives me length it gives me more it gives me more it gives me length it gives me volume and it comes off with regular cleanser like it doesn't I don't have to like scrub in between my eyelashes to get this out of my eyes and it it's just such an amazing mascara um the wand is pretty big so I feel like some people wouldn't like that but it is just I like it I mean <laughs> I don't really care um I just, it makes my, like the Victoria Beckham, like when I touch my eyelashes, they don't feel hard. They just feel like there's something on them, because there is. <laughs> um, they feel soft, like they feel healthy. Um, I don't know what's in this that makes them feel that way, but it's just, I think this is also like my third tube of this. I think this is my favorite mascara I have ever used ever. So lip liner. Um, I either like a warm neutral or a cool neutral. So I'm just gonna like keep it simple for, cause I feel like I have like a million of the NYX and a million of the MAC and this is the only one from Charlotte Tilbury I use and it's the only one I think I'll ever use because it's my lips but better. So like, we'll just start with that. Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. It is literally the color of my lips. And this staying power is so incredible. It's just like a very neutral nude. And it's just fantastic. Like it's, you know, it's expensive, but I, I deem it like 
worth it. I love it so much. It's it's an amazing lip liner. The second one is uh, a warm nude. Um, and I reach for this one a little bit more because I tend than my other MAC nude lip liners because um, this one tends to match my lips and the warm brown nudes that I kind of lean towards with my lipsticks. Um, but this is MAC Strip Down and that's more brown, you see. It stays forever. It's lasts forever. It's it's really amazing. Like, I can't really, like, go on and on about lip liners. They're either good or they're not. And the last one is NYX, the NYX lip liner um, in the shade Natural. This is also a formula where it lasts really long and it, it lasts, this is also a formula that lasts really long but it's significantly cheaper than both of those. The, it's significantly cheaper than the previous two. And as you can see here, let me, this is NYX, this is MAC, and this is Charlotte Tilbury. Um, Charlotte Tilbury and the NYX, um, I could say that they're pretty interchangeable. You do not need both. Stripped Down is visibly more warm. All three of them uh, blend into my lips seamlessly. I like to blur them out. And they last a really long time. Um, this is just the one I reach for the most, but I love all the shades that I have in all of these formulas. And lastly, lips. So this one was kind of hard as well, because there's a lot of different lip products that I use and love, but on the everyday, like if I'm, I'm just imagining myself doing my makeup really fast and what I know will work. Um, and that's also like kind of what helped me decide things. So the first one is the Merit Lipstick and this is in the shade Slip. This is such a beautiful formula. It's kind of waxy and it gives you that sheer blotted lip without having to blot your lips. Like you just do a whoop whoop and it's, it just gets it done. Like this is such a beautiful like brown. <laughs> like, like, look at that! Like, that with Stripped is, like, the perfect pairing. Like, look at that. Like, wow! Oh, yeah, I love this lipstick so much. Um, I thought about getting other colors in this, but then when I think about it, I was like, why would I spend the money and get all of these other colors in this formula that I love when I know I'm always gonna pick up Slip? That's how they get you. That's how you- that's how you overspend on makeup. Instead of just using the one that you love, you go out and buy other colors in a formula that you like. Um, when you know you're just going to be using this one way more. So just use the one you have and use the one you love. The next two are some NARS products. Um, this one is their lip balm. Their sheer lip balm? I think that's what it's called. Afterglow Lip Balm. This is in the shade Torrid. I have basically all of the shades which is kind of silly because they're so sheer that it's it's not that nuanced you know but I just picked Torrid because it's the newest one in my collection so I've been wearing it a lot but they're all pretty interchangeable they're very hydrating there's no real scent or taste which I really like um it's just really nourishing and it's not melty so I have other lip balms that are a similar formula to this, but the second they're in your pocket or it's a kind of hot day, they just mush and squish. And this does not do that. This maintains its shape and it's very consistent. So this is why I pick this formula, not necessarily this color. Like if they had the Laguna one that was permanent, that would be, cause it's a brown, that would be my, my ride or die. Like I wouldn't need any other ones, but I just, I feel like I collect these in a way. I think they're, I, they're beautiful. And lastly is the Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm, which a, a matte lip balm that, that doesn't really make any sense to me, but um, it's what I'm wearing on my lips today, currently. And this is a beautiful nudie brown, has some pink in it. It's, you know, everything I look for in <laughs> color, in my color stories. Um, but this is um, much more pigmented. It's not, I wouldn't say that this is balmy at all, but it's very lightweight, but pigmented. 
um, and it's matte but not drying. So that's the only thing we can really look for in a matte product is that is it going to dry me out and make me look all crusty? And this will not. Yeah, and this, however, does have a vanilla, kind of like how MAC lipsticks do. This has a vanilla scent and taste to it, but it's not overpowering, so it's it doesn't make you, if you're kind of sensitive to that or if you hate vanilla, um, this isn't too, too bad, but you see, it's just, it's just so lovely. I just love it so much. I have wanted other colors in this formula, but like the Merit um, lipstick, why would I get other colors when I know that this is always going to be my favorite? So I'm just going to enjoy the one that I have. Okay, I should probably wrap this up. Because um, the lighting changed really drastically and kind of lost my daylight here. But those are my top, those are my top three. <laughs> Pick number two, my lord. Those are my top three in every category. I really hope you enjoyed this or learned something or were inspired, or if you were unsure about a product and I talked about it that I convinced you to mindfully spend your money on one thing that you know you're going to love. Um, that's it, that's all for today, folks. 